Hey there warriors, I tested the new React 19 hooks inside the Next.js 15 application and I wanted to share with you the demo, how is it used inside the app and also to check out the code. And if you want to play around this project, it's on the public GitHub repository and you can find it in the description below. First hook that we have is the use hook. So all these examples are from the React 19 public documentation. You can check it out there. I'm going to leave also that link in the description below. And here we have download message button. And when I click this button, we are getting the pending state downloading message. And in the end, here is the message Loktar Ogar. So this message is coming from our server action. The main difference is that for something like this, we always needed to make a server component in order to make it async and then await our message, in this case Loktar Ogar, and display it inside of our UI. And as you can see, this is a promise and we are not awaiting it, so how we would usually do it is this would be an async function and we would await for our promise to be resolved but use hook is doing that for us. So basically this is our client component and we are awaiting the data like we are inside some server component. And what is different from all other hooks is that use can be used inside an if statement or inside a loop. So here we could say, let's say if one equals one, in that case we are going to create this message content and this is totally fine. We are not getting the errors and the warnings that we are using the hook inside the if statement. And let's check this message container. So what is important is that when we are using it with a promise, in this case, it is a promise. It can also be context. We need to use suspense. So that's how the API works. So we are putting our message inside the suspense. There we are creating a fallback for our pending state. So here we are awaiting our data and displaying whatever we want, some skeleton or in this case the paragraph. And then later when our data is fetched, then we are just displaying it here using our use hook. I think it's a really powerful thing because before we were struggling in case we need to await some data inside the client component, then we needed to restructure everything and do some totally different architecture of our data flow. But we should still prefer to use server components over use hook. You can read it also in the React documentation. And the reason for that is that promises created in client components are recreated on each render. And we have a lot of unnecessary rendering inside of our application, so it's still better to create all your promises inside the server components and then pass them as props or whatever architecture you have inside of your project. So conclusion is that this is a great thing to have if you cannot somehow pass the data from your server components to client components and you have this plan B where you can just use use hook to call any promise or context. Next hook is use optimistic. And here we have some kind of chat. So we have an input and we can type in here, hi. And when we click send, we are getting this sending, which is basically optimistic. And in the end, when our promise is resolved, only then we are rendering basically our message that we sent from our input. So what actually happened here? Usually when we have something like this, like some kind of, let's say comment section on some website. And when we type in org, and we send that one is going to the server and we are waiting for one, two, three seconds, depending on the backend to return that org message that we originally sent. And then we display it inside of our comment section. But here we are optimistically using that message that we sent here and we are displaying it even before it is resolved from our backend. So let's see how does it look in code. If we go here, we can see that we are using use optimistic from react and then we have our state messages and set messages. So this is a regular state. It's just an array full of messages. And the first one is hello there. We have Boolean sending, which is basically telling us if we are going to show that sending 
inside our brackets and we have some key. And below we have our optimistic messages and add optimistic messages that are coming from the use optimistic hook. And as you can see, we are placing the optimistic messages to be exactly the same like this state here, our messages. And our add optimistic message is, you've probably seen this one if you're working with React a lot, so this is classic set state where we are using our old state and we are passing in the new object, in this case that's the new message that we are sending. Sending is set to true so we can display that brackets with sending message and we are just putting our new key here. So what is happening when we are handling our submit for our input is that first thing that we are doing is we are adding our optimistic message and we are using the form data, our message. So from here it was first high and then it was orc and we are setting it as our optimistic message. So what is happening basically is that we are adding whole new object to our state and we are adding this new message. So first let's say hi, so this is in our case hi. Then we are sending it as true. So here we are displaying our loading inside the brackets and this is just setting our new key. And then we are awaiting two seconds. So this is just mocking like the, the mock of backend. We are waiting two seconds for, for some data to be returned. And finally, we are setting our messages to that real data. So we are saying that this one is coming from the backend. So I'm going to write here backend. And then we are displaying the real data, which is basically here. So these are our real messages that are coming from the backend. And if we type here dev, this is optimistic. And now it's actually from our database. I love this hook. This was something that I was waiting for. I think that UI UX is going to become much better with use optimistic because everything is going to feel much smoother and better. And I can't wait to use it on some of my real projects. And when I get the real use case, I'm definitely going to create a video to show you how this hook is really awesome. Next hook is use action state. So here, we have our add to cart button and buy a product. So this is for some e-commerce, let's say. And when we click add to cart, we are getting our pending state. So we are getting the loading and finally added to cart. So this one is also coming from server actions. And I think this hook is probably going to be the most used from all the new hooks. So we are basically updating our state based on our form actions. And as you can see here, we are using use action state from React and what are we getting is our message, our form action and our is pending state. Hello TRPC, hello 10 stack query. And when we go to our add to cart inside our server actions, we can see that we are passing our item ID. It is not used, but we can use it on some get uh, endpoint or something like that. And then we are again mocking the backend we are resolving it for two seconds and we are sending back the message added to cart and here we are getting that message from our server action and we have our form action which is this add to cart function and then this null is initial state for our message so here if we if we would place some org dev and we refresh here we would get here org dev and then when the add to cart we're getting loading and finally the message from our server action and we have this is pending state which is really awesome so we don't have to do any more loading is loading with use state and use that one as our parameter to show if it's loading or not we can just use is pending and it's working same like in trpc or 10 stack query so this one is really awesome i'm probably going to use the use action state on every new hook that i create in future so at least i'm going to try i want to try it out on production if it is working well and if it is i'm definitely going to use it and the last one is use form status and here we have an input and also a button and then we need to request a username. So I'm requesting org dev. And when I click submit, we are getting this disable button and we are requesting org dev. So we are displaying some messages and in the end we are sending that data to our server action. So what is so special about this is that we are getting 
the information about our form submit within the child component. So here we can see that we are using the use form status, this time from React DOM, so this one is not from React. And here we are using it and we are getting the pending state and the actual data from our form. As you can see, these two are two totally different components and here we don't have any props, but we are using the form information about our submission inside of this component. So here we are getting, this is, we have the button submit, we are getting for that one pending and we are displaying what are we actually requesting from our form. So here, when I request anything and I press submit, we are getting pending state in some totally other component and it's not in the original one where we actually have our form. So this one is making our life easier when we have those enormous forms where you have like 40 input fields and your file is over 1000 lines. You can at least move your button and some things like this, like loading, like skeletons and all those stuff and just pick up the information from your submission using use form status. But the only way to do it is to import those components actually inside of your forms. And the usage of use form status, I can really see it in future for making some nice loading components and all that stuff around the form to make everything again to look smooth and nice for UI UX. And also for practical reasons, if you have some file that is 2000 lines and you want to separate things a little bit or maybe reuse part of your form, for example, username and password are used in three forms, you can reuse it and it's going to work inside of that form that you are using, then it's also a great thing to use new hook, use form status. Those are four new hooks that we received inside the Next.js 15 from React 19 and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like more content like this, just join the horde, subscribe.